you to stand with us tonight. We're going to sing together, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? 
leaning on the everlasting arms. Let's sing. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. The everlasting arms leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Let's have some fun tonight. Y'all want to have some fun tonight? Let's do that last verse one more time. When we do leaning, let's act like we're leaning tonight, okay? Let's do our stretches tonight, and let's do this. Leaning, all right? Everybody go this way so we don't have any head-end collisions, okay? Let's do that right there. Let's have a little fun tonight. Is that okay on midweek? And uh, let's smile a little bit, have some fun with the psalm. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you put actions with the words, it helps you remember it a little bit better. Do you know that? We do that with the children. With children's songs, we had all kinds of word uh, actions with that. It helps them remember what they're singing. And so when we're leaning tonight, I want you to, now, now don't hit anybody, all right? We don't want any wrestling matches tonight. But when you lean, think about, I'm leaning on Jesus, kind of like John did. And uh, I'm leaning upon the Lord. So let's do that one more time. You're singing great. And uh, so let's sing it out once again and uh, put some action with it. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all. may be seated. That was great. You guys did great with that. And uh, welcome to church tonight. And I trust you've had a great week and a, a good day today. And if you're glad to be at church, would you say amen? And there's nothing like being in the house of God. And I appreciate your faithfulness to him tonight. You know, when we're at church, uh, really we're being faithful to the Lord even more than we are the church. Really, because Jesus instituted the church. It's the, the body of Christ. We just make that up. And so really being faithful to him. And again, thank you for your faithfulness and uh, participation tonight. We had a great time of outreach and it just got in and had some tremendous visits. And I want you to pray that God would bless in a wonderful way those visits as we made and uh, people need the Lord. And so let's pray for po folks to be saved. And, uh, and folks to uh, be added to the church through this, through salvation, baptism, church membership, and other things. And so let's pray for that, okay? Great meal, just a great time of fellowship. And then service tonight, we're looking forward to our Bible study in here. And then looking forward to our Kids for Truth. They're already underway. They're over in the Heritage Hall and uh, playing games tonight as I was walking through from the office. And uh, excited about that good group over there. And then the teens will be dismissed here in just a few minutes. Let's pray for them. And then also that God would just minister to hearts in a very special way through the service tonight. So let's pray and ask God for his blessings.
tonight upon the ministries and the services. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for uh, this beautiful day. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that we have in so many ways to serve you. Lord, you've saved us, and now we have a desire to do something for you. Lord, we'll never be able to repay you for dying for us at Calvary, forgiving our sins, taking us to heaven. One day, there's no way that we can, Lord, but we can serve you. You did not ask us to die for you, but you have asked us to live for you. And, Lord, uh, that you've given us so many opportunities through your local church to to witness to others, Lord, to pray, and, Lord, to to be faithful, Lord, to be hungry, to receive the Word of God, to apply it into our lives, to to be fruitful Christians. And, uh, Lord, I pray tonight much of this will be implemented into every believer tonight. Lord, if there's someone watching tonight or or here that's not saved, may they trust Christ as their Savior for the only way to have eternal life in heaven. And Lord, I pray that you bless the youth ministries tonight in every way. Thank you for how you've blessed there. Continue to bless and uh, give us a great rest of the evening. And we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you can remain seated. Brother Holly's going to come and lead us in another song. And I want you to sing with all your heart unto the Lord tonight. I appreciate you singing out tonight. Uh, there is something about the name of Jesus, isn't there? And I hope that you'll maybe sing these songs throughout your, the rest of the week as you're at work, as you're at home, at school, and sing some of these songs. These are great songs. These are, this song, this past song was a very worshipful song, and I love that. And uh, it's great to have Miss Beverly on the organ, isn't it? And the organ adds so much to the service, and I appreciate her being able to be with us tonight. Uh, with her health, and we appreciate that. A couple announcements real quickly tonight. Let me get these to you. Teen activity this Saturday, and teens are going to Top Golf. I know you're excited about that, and I'm looking forward to being a part of that myself, Lord willing. And if you have any questions or you want to go see Brother or Miss Holly, of course, about that, appreciate the great job that they do each week uh, with our young people. And then also our services on Sunday. Looking forward to a great day Sunday. And uh, don't forget about breakfast. Anytime between 9.30 and 10 over the Activity Center. And then our children and adults Bible classes at 10 as usual. So keep that in mind. Let's be in our place in our adult Bible classes and children. Have our kids in there. Those kids are going to really grow spiritually to be in there. So let's have them faithful to that. If you don't have a class, I have one. Brother Matt, raise your hand. Brother Matt is the teacher in our auditorium class. It's not the best one, but it's okay. And I'm just kidding, Brother Matt. I'm just kidding. 
I love the friendly and loving competition. But uh, so uh, Brother Matt's in here, tremendous. Matt is a tremendous teacher. And, uh, and then he's in here. And then uh, my class in Activity Center where the round white tables are. And the Maranatha class, we have three adult classes, the Maranatha class is now at the end of the hallway in the educational wing, and, and their door is marked there, and they have phenomenal teachers. They have a couple teachers there. Haynes Moore is one of them. They do a phenomenal job as well. And so be a part of those uh, Sunday. And then also don't forget about 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock services all happening on Sunday. We have a baptism after the morning service. We're excited about that and a family joining the church. If you are interested in joining the church, you see me. And we'd love to have you be a part of that. So keep that in mind if you will, okay? Also, there's several sign-up sheets. Let me mention real quick. One, a sign-up sheet for the fall golf tournament. That's in the entryway. I think there's 18 already. So that means uh, probably four, four or five teams at least already. And so we're grateful for that. And uh, But we'd love to have, I don't know, 20, 30 plus. And so if you have any questions about that, see Kayla Taylor. I think we're playing at Old Home Place again. And so keep that in mind if you will, please. And uh, looking forward to a great time. Let's pray for great weather for that as well. And if there's somebody that you want to play with, just write their name there beside of yours and keep that in mind if you will, please. Okay. Also, the sign-up sheet for the Cornhole Tournament is out there as well. This is Saturday, September 28th. Cornhole Tournament starts at 5 o'clock. Let's pray for good weather with that. Great time of fellowship. Hot dogs and hamburgers and the fellowship, the picnic, will happen at 6 o'clock out back. All of this happening out here by the playground area behind the building here. And so keep all that in mind. We're looking forward to that. Thank you for those who signed up to bring something. There's still room to bring something. We need a lot of stuff. This is usually a big turnout for a church picnic. And we want everyone to be a part of this. Consider this an invitation for you to come, okay? Don't wait for somebody to personally invite you. Although we hope they do, but don't wait for that. You just mark your calendar. You show up, and uh, we're just going to have a great time. Bring the football, bring the frisbee, and uh, just help yourself out here to the uh, out here to the uh, the big field, and we'll just have a great time together and relax and enjoying a great time of fellowship. Also, the meal ministry. Thank you for those who signed up for that. Those sign up sheets are still out here on the table by the media desk, and uh, there's still room on that sign up sheet for the meal ministry. Just as a reminder. If you have already been a part of the meal ministry, uh, we need you to re-sign up, please, so that we can reorganize, regroup a little bit uh, as we uh, add new ones to that and so forth. And so help us with that, if you will, please. Also, the fall revival, I think that's been taken care of for the most part in meal ministry. And this is, again, this is sporadic at when we need that for surgeries babies and other things okay so keep that in mind if you will for that all right let's all stand together all over the building also thank you for those who brought gifts for uh claudia and adam chinlin they're at the hospital right now and let's pray for god's blessings upon the new arrival of the little baby girl but thank you for all of those who got the gifts that's the reason they're still over there they're at the hospital right now and so you be pray for them let's sing out with all of our heart unto the lord as brother holly sings this song leads us this great hymn of the faith
right, we're going to do that through a couple more times together as you're finding your way back to your seat. Sing out, enjoy it with us tonight, if you will. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sun. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain. Cleansed by his blood, join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Amen. Let's remain standing. Ushers, you come at this time, if you will, please. We're going to receive our offering tonight, and our Wednesday night offering always goes to what? Missions, and so let's be faithful to the missions program uh, tonight in our giving. And some of you can give on Sunday, of course, I'm sure you do. Give on Sunday and uh, and just mark it for missions, it'll go to that. But just whatever's in the plate goes to missions for tonight. And uh, it's important to make missions uh, a main central uh, mindset of the church because that's the heartbeat of God, as some preachers have said, and uh, is getting out the, the gospel. And uh, I'm grateful for those missionaries that we support. And uh, we're, we're still uh, uh, having in mind, and hopefully very soon, bumping up uh, a lot of the rest of our missionaries up to 200. And then on the 22nd, let me remind you, we'll have one of our missionaries with us. And I'm going to have the privilege to meet him for the first time. And uh, he hasn't uh, been able to be with us by, because of being on the field. Uh, John Harmon, not John Harmon, what's his name? Uh, Miss Holly, are you here? John Wilburn, thank you so much, Crystal. John Wilburn will be with us, and we're looking so much forward to him being with us and presenting his ministry. And uh, we already support him and have been for years and years, and we're grateful to have him share with his ministry what God is doing in the field which God's called him on that Sunday. So let's keep that in mind, if you will. All right, let's pray over the offering, and then you can be seated tonight. Father, we love you again. Thank you for this offering. Thank you for allowing us to support missionaries, Lord, and Thank you for those that we've had the opportunity to meet, Lord, since I've been here, Lord, in eight years. Some, some of these have been on the field and I just simply have not got to meet them yet. We're grateful for that meet them, some of them here recently and others to come. Thank you, Father, Father, for those we've got to recently support. We're grateful for those. Lord, I pray that you'd use our missionaries all across America, all across the world. Encourage them. and They go through struggles and trials just like we do yet on the mission field. And Lord, I pray that you would encourage them, equip them, and use them, empower them, use them to reach people the gospel, start churches, and, uh, and help uh, the church get established and uh, growing in the faith. And we'll thank you for how you bless in a great way through the missions program tonight. Bless each gift and giver tonight, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Right now the sea is troubled And the night has been so long Out on the open waters I'm praying for the dawn But I don't have to worry Through the storm of doubt Him as I face the raging sea. I don't know what lies ahead, but I know the one who stands by me. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who I place my faith in him. 
I'm not afraid to trust Him. This is not the first storm that He's brought me safely through. And I'm holding to his promise that I'll come through this one too. This storm won't last forever. I will see the sun again. No, I'm not going under. I'm not afraid to trust him as I face the raging sea. I don't know what lies ahead, but I know the one who stands by me. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my my faith in him I'm not afraid to trust him I don't know about tomorrow but I know who holds my hand I place my faith in him I'm not afraid to trust him I've placed my faith in Him, and, and I'm, I'm not, not afraid, afraid to trust Him. Him. I appreciate that tonight very much. We're going to look over our prayer requests tonight. We're going to mention several that will take outspoken prayer requests, if there's any of those tonight. And um, let's remember our shut-ins, if you will, please. There's many of those, and we want to remember those in the nursing homes, nursing facilities, and at home as well. Let's pray for our missionaries, as we just did a while ago during the offering. And then our nation, let's remember to pray for America. Uh, our nation needs prayer. Our nation needs the Lord. And uh, so let's pray for our leaders uh, to get saved. And let's pray that they would make godly decisions for our country. Let's pray for this upcoming election that uh, state, local, and federal, that God would put the people in leadership that would, be, that would lead us in the closest direction to him. And it might not be spot on, the Bible, but just the closest is, is what we need to choose. And so let's pray for that. Let's be vote and do what we should and pray and trust the Lord. And uh, that, that's just like that song said, just trust the Lord and put our confidence in Him. Uh, this is also 9-11, uh, of course, and so we want to be mindful of those who 23 years ago uh, lost their family members and, and uh, were hurting and uh, still hurting today. So let's be in prayer for those tonight. Also, let's pray for our churches all across America, sister churches that are preaching the, the Bible truths, the gospel on Sunday, even tonight. So let's pray for them. And let's also pray for our services on Sunday, that God will bless in a wonderful way, that po folks will be saved, every pew chair will be filled, every parking spot will be filled. Let's pray to that end tonight. Also, let's pray for a few of these uh, individual needs. Ernie Stewart, let's re remember to pray for him. Uh, Jean Adams, also uh, Connie Del Pardo, she's been asking us to pray for some friends of hers with cancer. Charles Poti, it was good to see him on Sunday, and we were really encouraged to see him. Also, continue to pray for Patricia Miller. Uh, Miss Patricia has pneumonia, and uh, we've missed her in the last couple of services. I've got to spoke, speak to her this week on the phone, and she's very sick, and I want you to be praying for her that God would help her with that. And uh, she's not in the hospital. She's at home, and, uh, but do pray for her with that. Don Lewis, I'm getting some very good encouraging reports about Don. He's at home. He's about 90% recovered. And uh, Lord willing, if he continues on that path, he'll be here wait, Lord willing, with us Sunday. And so I want you to be praying for him as he recovers. Also, 
Uh, Junior Wiles, good to see him tonight. Junior, you want to give us an update on how, you, how you're doing or your status? Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's continue to pray for Junior. Junior, thank you for giving us an update on that with his back. So do, do pray for him. I know that's given him quite a hard time there. Also, Barbara Harriman, continue to pray for her with some still, still some physical situations she's still uh, struggling with. Continue to pray for her with that. Uh, also, uh, continue to pray for Cooper. Got a good report on Cooper as so we thank God for that. Continue to pray for him as he'll be returning home soon. And then also Margie Everhart as she continues to recover her. And Lisa, Noah Anderson, Edward Boger, Melanie Weatherman will be having her procedure tomorrow. And I really want you to be praying for Melanie with her cancer surgery at Medical Park, that everything go very well. It's the outpatient surgery. and uh, But do pray that everything will go very smoothly and successfully there for her. Melanie Williamson as she continues to take uh, some pretty intense cancer treatment. 
and uh, do pray for her with that. Also, uh, Mary Lou and Larry Smith, I was on the phone a little bit with Larry today, and he's just really having a hard time. I want you to really pray for Larry. He's, he's got a tube, uh, he's at home, he's got a tube in him to let an infection uh, drain and, uh, from that gallbladder surgery. So pray, do pray for him, and if you will, please, Brad Doss's uh, stepmother, do continue to pray for her. Also, uh, Frank Andrews' sister-in-law, Judy, do pray for them. Frank, I got speaking to him on the phone the other day. They're out of town. Pray for them for tra- traveling. Also, Marianne Gaster, she's here tonight. Good to see you, Marianne. I was on the phone with her a little bit yesterday. She'll be having a heart procedure on October 4th. Is that right? And I want you to be praying for her. She's in having some uh, uh, AFib-type situation. I want you to be praying for her with that. The Lord would help her. And then I've already mentioned Adam and Claudia Chinlin at Forsyth Hospital with the baby. Continue to pray for them. Uh, just any moment now with the baby. So do pray for them, if you will. Does anybody have any outspoken prayer requests? We'll start on this side tonight. Okay, Helen. Okay, let's pray for this lady, Ann Phillips, with pneumonia and COVID, okay? Marianne? Sure. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you sharing that with us. Anybody else over here? Okay, Norm. Let's pray for the, so just pray for him with the with the situation with the, okay so let's pray for Norm's brother-in-law anybody else over here that I've overlooked okay over here does anybody have any outspoken prayer request Jalen Okay, let's pray for Jalen's family member with cancer. Anybody else over here? Okay, Casey. Okay, so let's remember these two needs tonight. The Casey's brought to us. Anybody else over here? Okay, Kat. Corey. Let's pray for Corey's uncle tonight. Okay. Anybody else over here? Over here? Does anybody have? Okay, Kelly. Sure. Amen. All right, let's pray for that need. Anybody else over here tonight? Okay, Brother Moore. Okay, all right, let's pray for Brother Moore's son, Jerry. Anybody else over here? Okay, Caleb.
Okay. Okay, so let's pray for this test tomorrow with Jordan, the baby. Okay, anybody else over here? Okay, Mr. Jim. Okay, all right. Okay, let's pray for these family needs right here with you. Suzanne, anybody else over here? Okay, over here. Anybody have any outspoken prayer requests over here? Okay, all right. If you have an unspoken prayer request tonight, would you raise your hand? And uh, we're not going to come to the altar tonight. We did that last week. But I want you to make that pew chair an altar tonight. And I want you to pray. And, uh, and I want you to pray while I'm praying and leading us tonight that God would answer these prayer requests according to his will. We can't mem- remember all of these. I wonder if you're like me and the Holy Spirit prompts you as I've heard these different needs. Some of these we've got on paper, but some of these uh, we, we've heard. And the Holy Spirit, throughout this week, he'll remind me of these things. And uh, it's interesting how he does that. And uh, so I, I want to encourage you to be conscious of that. And if God brings somebody to your mind, you pray for that and, uh, and that need. But let's bring all of these to the Lord tonight as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for uh, each one of our church family. Lord, those who are watching online, Lord, those who are here tonight, thank you for their faithfulness, Lord, their heart for you. And Lord, so many uh, prayer requests have been made tonight, many. And Lord, we ask that you would answer every one of these, each one of these, according to your will. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would comfort, Lord, that you would give grace and strength to each one of these needs. Lord, we ask in some of these cases that you pr- perform a, an absolute miracle. Oh, Lord, that you would draw that, that, that sinner, that person that is saved, but maybe not right where they should be spiritually that you would draw them to yourself. Lord, all of these spiritual needs, the emotional, mental, physical needs, Father, as well, we ask that you would be with those who are having procedures coming up. Lord, that these would go very smoothly and successfully for them, whether it's an actual surgery or whether it's a procedure. Lord, we ask also that you would be with, uh, again, all of these unspoken prayer requests that have made uh, known by a hand raised. Father, there's something there. There's, There's a need there. There's a desire there. There's a request there. And I pray that you'd meet that need According to your will, increase our faith. May we trust in you regarding it, as we've heard with the song a while ago. Father, I pray that you'd help our nation, Lord, help our country to turn back to you, Lord. Help our current leaders to trust Christ as their Savior, Lord. That's really the the main issue there. I pray that you would help those who are, uh, Lord, that you would have to be put in office with our state, the country, and also locally, Lord, that you would put the right people in in the position of leadership, Lord, that would bring us closer to you. And as a country, Lord, help America to turn back to you. Lord, bless and help uh, Israel. Bless them. Give them peace. Uh, Father, I pray that you would be with them and help them. Lord, again, bless our services on Sunday. Thank you for how you've blessed. Lord, thank you for what you've done and what you're doing in our church. We give you all the glory, honor, and thanksgiving for what you have done. And Please continue to bless in every way financially. Please allow us to pay that property off this fall, please. Or please do it for us, rather. And Lord, I pray that you continue to bless there. Help everyone to be faithful in their giving, uh, Lord, unto you. Lord, not because of, or given to a church, but Lord, of given to you and the church in which you've established. And Lord, I pray that you would increase the uh, numerical uh, aspect of our church. Lord, give us more labors for the harvest. Lord, fill this choir loft behind us. Give us orchestra instrumentalists, uh, Lord, to help glorify your name. Give us more labors for the children's ministry, Lord, and give us more outreach workers, soul winners. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd allow us to see more people saved and baptized and disciple, growing in grace, being faithfully committed unto you. Lord, bless spiritually. I pray that you give us revival. Bless our upcoming revival. Lord, I pray that you'd use Brother Baldwin in a very special way to minister our hearts. Bless numerically. Bless the meal. Uh, Lord, bless the good weather that week. And I pray for your power and your blessings upon the meeting in a mighty way. Lord, may we see great things come from that in our hearts as a church as a whole and even individuals as well. We love you tonight, and we'll thank you for all that you do in these needs that we're bringing to you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, take your Bibles tonight, please, if you will, and turn with me, please, to uh, the book of Genesis, chapter number 12. Genesis, chapter number 12 tonight, and again, thank you so much for being here and being faithful to the house of God. 
I'm going to ask you to do something that I haven't asked you to do in a long time on a Wednesday night, but I'm going to ask you to do it because you've been sitting for quite a few minutes. I'm going to ask you to stand. Let's all stand and stretch your legs for just a minute. It'll help you, and I understand everyone is not able to, so if you're not able to, that's completely fine as long as you don't fall asleep. Genesis chapter 12, and look with me please in verse number 1. We're just going to read 1, 2, and 3, and then uh, we'll pray, ask God for his blessing, the message, and then you can be seated tonight. Genesis chapter 12, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, notice it is not Abraham yet, it is Abram, his name was changed later on. He says, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, Unto a land that I will show thee. Raise your hand if you know where he lived before he was a pilgrim in the land of Canaan. Okay? All right, so we have a couple. Ur, you are. Ur of the Chaldees is where he lived. Verse number two, and I will make of thee a great nation, God says to Abram. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Father, we love you tonight. Bless the teaching and the preaching of your word tonight. Give me clarity of thought, mine, and use me to be a blessing. Help me to say everything I should and nothing I shouldn't. Father, And help us through your word tonight to grow spiritually. Well, thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been in this series. You can be seated. We've been in this series for a few weeks now on truth to stand in a crum- crumbling culture. And tonight, as you can see, we're talking about the subject of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism. And uh, already in this series, my wife asked me today, I sent her the outline and she so graciously does all the slides for us. We appreciate that. Mike is our media director over there, does a wonderful job. And uh, my wife gives him the, the stuff to put on and Mike just puts it on at the precise, perfect time, and uh, he's a multitasker. When I say multi, I mean multi, and uh, Mike does the screens, the slides, and the cameras, and uh, with some preachers, including your pastor, that's not an easy task, and I uh, appreciate that, And uh, but uh, uh, Brother Mike is, just does a wonderful job, but my wife does this, and she asked me today, I give her the, the information, all of that. And she asked me, she said, are you going in alphabetical order? She said, you messed up. You messed up if you were. And because we did atheism and agnosticism, we talked about that. And then we talked about the second week, uh, alternative lifestyles. Uh, We talked about that, such as homosexuality, transgenderism, and what the Bible says about that. And then we talked about abortion. What does the Bible say about that? And we talked about addictions. Took a night to talk about what the Bible says about that. Last Wednesday night, we talked about what? Climate change, which starts with the C. And now we're going back to the A, anti-Semitism. And she's like, did you mess up? And so I said, no, I didn't plan it like that. It's just kind of how it worked out. But um, we've been talking about truth to stand in a crumbling culture. Raise your hand if you agree and you believe that we are crumbling as a society in our Judeo-Christian values. And we're crumbling in a lot of different areas, and, uh, but especially in Judeo-Christian values. And uh, we need to know what the Bible says about some of these hot topic issues uh, so that we know where we stand and we also know how to help people that maybe have questions regarding this. I don't know about you, but I want to stand where God stands. Amen? I want to be on God's side on every issue and there's a lot of issues today that God has given us very clear direction on what he says about it. And that's what we're doing. We're looking at these hot topic issues of today that we see in politics, we see in the news media. And we're diving into this and knowing what does the Bible say about these things. And the Bible has a lot to say about this subject, not necessarily anti-Semitism, as we've come to know it in many cases. Anti-Semitism can be defined as hostility toward or discrimination against Jewish people. And unfortunately today, we see a lot of that even in our own country. Although the term anti-Semitism was coined in 1879, uh, there's always been a hatred for Jewish people. Did you know that? And uh, some of you may think uh, that it started with Adolf Hitler uh, back in the mid-1900s, but that is not true. Uh, Hatred for... 
God's people, the Jewish nation in particular, has always been around since, really, since uh, day one, if you will. Uh, in, let me give you some four instances. Uh, in Bible times, the Jews were despised, particularly in Egypt. You remember uh, Joseph going into Egypt by the providence of God and bringing his family there? There was about 70 of them. The nation of Israel mounted about 70. You had Abraham, we just read tonight. It started with Abram, or Abraham as we mostly call him. And then he had, who, who was his son? Help me tonight. Isaac, and then Isaac had Jacob, and then Jacob had the many sons that we have the 12 tribes of Israel from. Uh, he also had uh, Joseph, uh, two of his sons are incorporated in that, but uh, we find that uh, Joseph went into Egypt and through that process by God using him, he brought all his family to there. And that's really, in the land of uh, Egypt is really where they really blossomed into a, a, a large group of people as Israel. And really, God did not begin calling them Israel until uh, Jacob was named that. A lot of times you'll find Israel mentioned, and he's referring to uh, Jacob, the dad of the 12 tribes of Israel. But uh, we begin God calling them Israel, and they were particularly hated by the Egyptians. According to Genesis chapter 46... In verse number 34, the Bible says, For every shepherd it is abomination unto the Egyptians. Well, what were the Israelites? What were the Jewish people? What was David before he was king of Israel? He was a what? A shepherd. And most of the Israelites, the Jewish people, that was their occupation. So they were disdained and looked down upon by the Egyptians simply because of their occupation. The Egyptians would say, we're too good for that. We don't want sheep hair around us. We don't want the sheep smell around us. We don't like the livestock smell. You smell like sheep. And we don't, so, so they were disdained even then. In Nehemiah's day, another example, in Nehemiah's day, the Jews were scorned uh, by the Arabians, the Ammonites, and others because of the work of rebuilding the walls round about Jericho. Uh, re, read, the, read through the book of Nehemiah. And you'll find how they scoffed them, they ridiculed them, they criticized them simply because they were trying to do something for their city, Jerusalem. In Roman Empire times, the Jews were looked down upon because they were monotheistic. I'm, I, I tried to say that correctly and it came out wrong. Monotheistic, which is the worship of only one God, while a lot of other religions in the Roman Empire were polytheistic or the worship of many gods. And because the Jews only worship the one God, Jehovah, they were ridiculed by the Roman emperor, the Roman government, because a lot of their emperors were referred to as gods. And so if the Jews in the Roman Empire time frame of history said, we're only going to worship one God, Jehovah, then they were looked down, criticized, perhaps prosecuted, persecuted because of that, because they recognized even their emperors as gods. In the mid-1900s, we're very familiar, getting closer to our time frame. I'm just giving you some four examples here. In the mid-1900s, we find Nazi Germany's hatred of the Jewish people killing millions because of political reasons. And then, of course, today there is influence in America to despise Jews, uh, and that, I think, I, this is a personal take on this, uh, I believe it stems from the Muslim religion and countries that embrace Islam, and of course they despise and hate the Jews because of religious purposes. And so the Jews and Israel and the Jewish people and the Jewish nation have always been ridiculed. They've always been hated for many different reasons. Land, religion, occupation, it just goes on and on. But I believe the greatest reason, and I believe all of these reasons that we've named throughout history for the ridicule uh, could be grouped into one, and that is the world's hatred. We've listed many different nations and nationalities that hated the Jews but I believe it could be grouped into one reason for their hatred, and that is simply because they represent God. God established the nation of Israel. It wasn't some man who tried to create a name for himself. It was a call upon a man 
to leave. As we've read here in Genesis chapter 12, it was called upon a man named Abram to leave his family and his friends and his job and everything that he knew and to go into an area that he didn't know where even he was going. He was just being led of God, but he was called out to leave his home to go start another country. Why? So God could have a people that represented him upon the face of the earth and that through one day, Jesus Christ could come. And uh, aren't you thankful for the Jewish people that through them, Jesus Christ came? Amen? And if we're not careful... If we're not careful in today's culture, we can become swept away with the crumbling of society that has a disdain towards Israel and the Jewish people. Uh, if you're not careful, you'll get swept away in this rhetoric of, of uh, hatred for Jews. I don't know, I don't understand all of it. We've given some reasons tonight, but I don't understand all of that. There's instances sometimes in the Bible, in the book of Acts, where they would all go into the Colosseum in Rome and they were, uh, they were uh, uh, having a mob type situation. And the Bible says the greater part didn't even know why they were there. They just got caught up in the rhetoric. They just got caught up in the, the mob type situation where everybody was pushing. And sometimes if we're not careful, we can get wrapped up into that type of thing. But God's people, the children of God, the believer in 2024 needs to stand unashamedly with Israel because they are God's chosen people. Amen? So we, we must ask ourselves as Christians, why do we support Israel? Why Israel? Why the Jewish people? And what makes them so special? Uh, because let's just be honest, they are the nation that crucified Jesus. So some religions can look at that, even the Catholic Church perhaps, or other religions could look at that and say the Jews can be hated and it's okay to hate them because they are guilty of the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, we understand that prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus died and the, the God sent him that for the purpose of that. God, that's just how God used the events to, to get him there. But they are still God's chosen people. God has punished his people. God, because of their neglect to him, their disobedience to them, but God still loves those people. And God is still going to uh, bless them and help them, even today. Isn't it interesting? I thought about having a map up on the screens, and we may do this because I don't think we're going to get done tonight. But isn't it interesting how many enemies Israel has all around them? And you can evaluate the size, the landmass of the nation of Israel, and the landmass of all of their enemies around them in the countries land masses that are around them that despise them and hate them and they're just, you know, sitting on uh, the, 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 the missile button to do their best to destroy them. I, I've got news for you. They're not going to be destroyed. God's going to protect his people. And, um, and we're going to be talking about this in, in this subject tonight of, of anti-Semitism, people's hatred for Israel and why we should stand with them. Let me give you a few biblical reasons why we stand with Israel. Number one, the Jewish people have God's promises. The Jewish people have God's promises. Now, look with me in chapter 12, again, in verse number one. And we find here that the Jewish people have the promise of land. They have that promise of land. God has designated a certain area of land that he has given them. Look in verse number one. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. We learn later on that God delivered the, the land to them. They if, Go with me in your mind back to when uh, they were in Egypt. They were slaves. They were bondage in, e in, 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 in Egypt. They were slaves there. And God sent the plagues and said, through Moses to Pharaoh, let my people go. God, uh, God delivered them. They went through the Red Sea. They wandered in the wilderness because of their unbelief for 40 years. We know that. And because they had that unbelief in, at Kadesh Barnea. But eventually we find that Moses died. Joshua got to lead them into the promised land, the land of Canaan, Israel as we know it, across the Jordan River. They defeated. God used them to miraculously defeat the walled city of Jericho, 
And then they began inheriting the land. And God gave them a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. It was a land already inhabited. There was already, uh, there was already animals, livestock there. There was already beehives there. There was already fresh water there. There was already fruits and vegetables. The land was very productive. It was ripe for the, for the crop, for the, it was the cream of the crop of the land. It's a beautiful land, as we saw in pictures, and some of you have been there in person. And God used them to drive, God drove out the heathen, and they inherited that land. God gave them a land that they did not even have to, in some cases, didn't even have to fight for. They, they did have to be willing, in some cases, to, to walk around the walls of Jericho and so forth. But as long as they trusted in God, as long as they believed God, God gave them that land. Isn't that interesting? The power of God. The Jewish people have the promise of the land. And then we notice in verse number 2, the Jewish people have the promise of recognition. God says to Abraham, remember again, Abraham's not going out and starting his own nation. It's God telling him what to do. And again, they have the promise of recognition. Verse number two, God says, I will make of thee a great nation. And they are a great nation, aren't they? Think about if you'll Google it, you will find out all of these inventions that have came for the nation of Israel. I can't remember. I don't have them wrote down. I can't remember what they all are. But there's some very common household uses that we use every single day in our kitchens and so forth that came from Israel. They are very intelligent people. They're a great nation, not necessarily in comparison to population in another country, but they're a great people. They're very intelligent people. Great nation. Number, letter C, the Jewish people not only have the promise of land, they have the promise of uh, recognition, they have the promise of blessing. Look at verse number two, and I will make of thee a great nation, God says to Abraham, and I will bless thee. Now, I don't know about you, but I desire the blessings of God. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have the blessings of God than all the money in the world. I'd rather have the blessings of God in my life, in my family's life, in our church, than any other friendship, or, you know, friendships are good, relationships are wonderful, money helps, doesn't it? But I'd rather have the blessings of God. And God says to Abram, who is the father of the nation of Israel, I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. There's two things here I want us to see here. God has blessed them directly. I will bless thee. I think about, we'll talk about the protection later on. But I think about God and how he has protected Israel. He has blessed them in so many ways. I will bless thee. He has blessed them directly. And then, then God has used them to be a blessing. Look at go on down in verse number 3. He says, and I will bless them that bless thee. Now there's one secret of America, isn't it? Is it not? I believe that one reason that America is blessed today is because they have blessed Israel. They have, we have been a friend to Israel, and it's very important, especially in election season, to look at that state, local, federal uh, elections and understanding that we need to make sure that we're putting people in positions the best of our ability that are going to stand in the greatest way with the nation of Israel because that's God's chosen people. We need to vote on biblical principles, amen? I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. Now, we just talked about I want the blessings of God, but I sure don't want the curse of God. And you say, how do I get the blessings of God? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Bless, be a, be a friend to Israel. Pray for Israel. Support Israel. Stand with God's chosen people. Say, oh, they crucified Christ. They don't even believe in Jesus Christ. But yet they are still God's chosen people. And then we find that, again, verse number 3, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Well, I wonder how that's going to take place. Well, it already has. His name is Jesus. Because he came through one of the tribes of Israel. Jesus was born. He was, uh, lived a perfect sinless life. And he died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and rose again. And now I can call upon him in 2024, nearly 2,000 years ago after Christ, I can call upon him for salvation. And th this, th this actual verse, Genesis 12, 3, has been fulfilled in simply me and my family trusting in Jesus Christ. Because of through the nation of Israel, Jesus Christ came 
Through him I find salvation. I am blessed, not because of my good merit, because of my hard work, but because of the grace and the mercy and the love and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can be thankful for that, all families. And by the way, you say, well, Pastor, uh, what about this family? What about this family? Well, if they have Christ as their Savior, they are blessed. Amen? And what a blessing that is. Now, um, next week, there's, a, there's so much. I'm going to stop here because I want to I wanna finish. Oh, my goodness, it's, it's grating against me not to finish. I prepared this and, and prayed about it, and I'm ex- I was ex- so excited about getting this to you. But next week, we're going to finish up. We've got several more points and a lot of Scripture references that I want us to look at, and I want us to take our time with it. And I feel like if I, if I try to finish tonight, I'm going to be rushing through it, and I really want us to get this because this is so very important for us today to, to make sure that we understand this. And uh, so it's going to be good, uh, Lord willing, um, uh, next Wednesday night. All right, so let's bow our heads and pray together tonight. I'm closing a little bit early, but if I, if I continue on, we're, we're, we'll get over uh, well over tonight, over our time frame. I'm thankful that it's through the nation of Israel that all nations can be blessed. If you're here tonight and you've never trusted in Christ as your personal Savior, He loves you. He wants you to be saved. He was crucified. He died for you so that you could have a home in heaven. And if you've never trusted in Christ, I encourage you to trust Christ your Savior. And if you have a doubt about Israel or the Jewish nation, remember Jesus was a Jew. That's who He came. He loved those people. And I'm thankful that through their rejection, now the gospel has came to the Gentiles. And oh, I'm so grateful for that because you see, I'm not a Jew, I'm a Gentile. And I'm so thankful that Jesus loved not only his own people, but he loved the Gentiles as well. Let's all stand together all over the building tonight. Maybe you want to pray right there. Lord, thank you for Israel. Thank you for a nation through which, we'll see this next week, through which we have scripture. Oh, if it wasn't through the, for the Jewish nation, for Israel, we would not have the canon of scriptures we have today. Oh, I'm grateful for them. Very intelligent people, very meticulous people. Who every jot and every tittle very meticulously copied the word of God that's been preserved for us today. Through Israel, we have a Savior. Oh, I'm grateful for Israel. If you have a need tonight, would you come? If you need to be saved, would you come? If you have a need of Christian service, whatever that may be in your life, would you come tonight as they play for just another moment? Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for the nation of Israel. Lord, it was not a man's choice. It was your choice to establish it. To, that all nations, Lord, all around the world and all the people around the world would know that there's a God in heaven through your people. Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you for your people. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to love your people. They may not be saved. They may not be very sweet because of not trusting Christ. Lord, but help us to never have a hatred for Jews. Lord, help us to have a love for them, to pray for their peace as you've commanded us in the Word of God. Lord, help us to thank, be thankful for them and realize you're not done with them. Lord, as we'll see next week, we love you. Give us a great rest of the week. Lord, help us to be a soul winner. Lord, help us to have a burden for the lost. Help us to love others unconditionally, Lord, as you love us. Help us to show grace and mercy to others this week as you show mercy and grace to us. Help us to forgive others this week as you've forgiven us. Help us to take your word, to read it, to implement it, to apply it. Lord, help us to be spirit-filled, not walking in the flesh. Help us to do as we should. Help us to seek to please you, not ourselves or anybody else. Help us in our Christian lives, Lord. We love you. Bless this coming Sunday, your day, a great way of worship. We'll thank you for what you do in our hearts. We love you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you so much for being here tonight. You're a blessing to me just through your faithfulness. You say, Pastor, I can't do this or I can't do that. You're a blessing just because you're in your place. And uh, your sweet spirit 
and I appreciate your faithfulness so very much. All right, turn around. We're a little bit dis- we're dismissing a little early, so let's do. Well, let's shake five hands. Count them now with a smile. God bless you. Don't forget about the sign-up sheets. You're dismissed.